Okay, um, good afternoon, year two. Here is Wednesday's geography lesson. Um, we're going to be learning today about trees and about the rainforest. Okay, so have a look at that picture that you can see here. Have a look at what you can see. Where do you think that is? Why do you think it might be so important? What job do those plants do that's really important? Think about last week's work on food chains to help you. Okay, so why are they so important? Well, we're going to have a look today. So this is a picture of the sun. Now, obviously, this has been taken through a very powerful um, telescope in space. Uh, if you got really close to the sun, it would just the telescope would melt. So this has been taken by a telescope, which is quite far away, but has got a really good zoom on it to zoom in. And you can see here that the Earth is that little dot that the arrow is pointing to right in the distance. So that shows you how far away from the sun the Earth is. There are lots and lots and lots of um, people living on that Earth. Everybody on this planet lives on there and look how small it looks. You can see that coming off the, Earth, the sun is this kind of loopy ring shape. Now that's called a solar flare. And that's what happens when the sun's energy, because the sun is a big ball of gas and it's very, very hot and it's burning at a massively high temperature. And sometimes it, a bit of it pops out and some of those, we call that solar flare, and it pops out and it makes this big loop, this corona style shape and sends that into space. Now it's perfectly safe. Sometimes a big solar flare can affect electronic items and make things um, not, like radios not work properly but you can see a one close up there. So imagine how hot that sun must be. Imagine, think about how hot it is for us on earth and look how far away the earth is. So the sun has got lots of energy, okay? The sun is the source of all our energy. And that sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? How do we get the energy from the sun? Well, we're gonna find out. So the sun is the original source of energy on earth for all living things, so everything. Us, monkeys, giraffes, pandas, dogs, cats, um, spiders, tortoises, even plants. And that's really important, okay? So everything gets its energy from the sun. Without the sun, we would not be able to get any energy from our food, we would just die. So the sun is the most important thing in our solar system. And we can get our energy by eating something that has got its energy from the sun. But that's interesting, isn't it? How does something get its energy from the sun? Can we get our energy from the sun? Can animals or plants get their energy from the sun? How would they do that? Do we get energy from the sun when we go sunbathing or we go and play on the beach and we get a tan? Is that us getting energy? Does that give us food? It doesn't, does it? So what do you think gives us the energy? What living, uh, living things can get their energy from the sun? Have a think. Think back to that work we did last week on um, foods, um, food cycles, um, food chains, not food cycles, sorry. That's right, it's plants, specifically green plants. So plants that have green leaves. They can make energy from the sun. That's really clever. So without plants, there would be no way for us to get the sun's energy into our bodies. And we wouldn't be able to live, would we? All green plants and trees are very special because they can get their energy directly from the sun using those green leaves. They're really important. They don't eat like we do to get their energy, though. So they don't gobble up food. They don't get a nice piece of meat or some rice and eat that. They eat in a very different way. So here's some green plants. And this bottom one's a rainforest. Can you see how many plants and trees there are growing? So plants get their energy from the sun through something really complicated that we call photosynthesis. It's a hard word that can you say that? Photosynthesis. Okay. Now, photo means light, and synthesis means to change or make something. So photosynthesis kind of means changing light. 
So I'm going to talk you through roughly what it is. I'm not expecting you to understand this because it's very, very complicated. But plants use their roots, which we know about. And they draw water up into the plant from those roots. So the water falls on the soil or wherever the plant is, and it draws that water up into its body to keep itself healthy. At the same time, the sun is shining on the plant's leaves. And these leaves want to point towards the sun. All plants' leaves will try and grow towards sunlight. And they use special cells in their leaves, the type of cells that make the leaves green. They're called chlorophyll to absorb sunlight. So they can take sunlight onto these green cells in their leaves and change it. Okay, so what happens is the plant uses the sun's energy to mix with water and carbon dioxide that it gets from the air. So what we breathe out is what plants breathe in uh, to make sugars and types of things called carbohydrates so it can grow. Now carbohydrates are things that are really good for energy. So we find them in things like bread and rice and pasta. But plants make carbohydrates so that we can have the energy we need and they make sugar so that we can have the energy we need. The plants make them so they can grow, but then that energy is in something that can be eaten. So then things that eat plants can use the energy that they make to grow. So for example, if a little aphid, a tiny little insect, ate a leaf, it gets energy from there. And then a ladybird might eat the aphid, which is gonna get the energy that the aphids got from the plant. And then a bird might eat a ladybird, which is gonna get that energy. So the energy is passed on from the sun along to other things. So the sun and plants particularly are very, very important. Now remember, there's a picture of the earth, okay? Just to remind you, if the earth was spread flat, so the earth we know, what shape is it? Can you remember? That ball shape, isn't it? It's got a special name. Do you remember what it is? That's it, a sphere. Not a sphere, a sphere. And this picture is a map of the earth. And it just says, remember, if the earth was spread flat, so if it wasn't a ball, and it was daytime everywhere at the same time, it might look like this. So if we were to look at the Earth from space, it wouldn't look like this because the Earth is curved, isn't it? It's round, it's a ball. And some places are dark at nighttime, some places are light at daytime. But if it was light everywhere and everything was flat, this is what it would look like, okay? What do you notice about that picture, that map, that atlas? What can you see? What colors can you see? Is there any pattern in those colors? So where are the green bits? Why do you think they're green? What do you think the white bits are? And can you see how they're at the top and the bottom, aren't they? And what do you think the kind of yellowy, browny bits might be? Why do you think they're where they are? So remember, have a think about the equator. What's the equator? What do we know about it? So here's two pictures taken from a satellite of the same place. It's a place called James Bay in Canada. Why do you think, what, sorry, how are these pictures different? So how's the one on the left, the green one, different to the one on the right? And why do you think that is? What's happened? You're absolutely right. In the first picture, it looks like it's quite a nice sunny, probably spring or summer day. And if we look, it says at the top, August the 9th. So it's in the middle of summer, isn't it? And you can see all the green plants. You can see all the water, the little island in the middle. And you can see there's actually dry brownie bits towards the bottom as well. Now on the second picture, everything is white because it's frozen, isn't it? It's cold, it's winter. We can't see any of those green plants. Why do you think that we don't get as many green leafy plants when it's colder? What do we think? What happens with the sun when it's colder? Think about winter, think about what it's like at the moment. That's right, you're absolutely right, because when it's colder, the sun's not as strong, so the plants can't get as much energy from the sun's light. So they get rid of lots of their leaves to stop them having to use energy, keeping them alive, because it keeps takes a lot of energy to grow leaves. So they will get rid of them, most plants, not all plants, and then grow them back again in the summer. And here is another picture. And how are these pictures different? 
It's obviously a picture of the same place, the same thing, the same tree. What do you notice? That's right, they look, some of them are more green, some of them are more brown. They change colour, don't they? The surrounding land changes colour. What do you think this shows? That's right, it shows the seasons, doesn't it? So where we are in our temperate climate, so um, north of the equator, quite, but, um, uh, but below the Arctic, it's temperate, which means it doesn't get too hot, but it doesn't get too cold. And below the equator, in between the equator, well, but quite below the equator, and before the um, Antarctic, it's like that as well. And we get these four seasons, don't we? Spring, summer, autumn, winter. So you can see here in spring, quite a lot of leaves growing, they've not all fully grown. And the next one is the summer, everything's very green because that's when the sun is at its hottest. The plant can make lots of energy. Then we've got autumn, the plant's leaves start to die, don't they? Because they don't get as much sunlight. They're getting ready for the winter, aren't they? They're shedding that, those extra needs for energy. And then in the winter, we just have uh, wood, sticks, branches with no leaves on them. And that helps the tree to stay alive when it can't get its food as easily from the sun. So here's a world map that shows the world's rainforests. And you can see that red line across the middle is what we call the equator. And do you remember, what do you notice about where the rainforests are, those green patches on the map? Where are they? Where are the rainforests in relation to that? That's right. They're nearly on them, aren't they? They're around either just above or just below that equator line. And that's because, well, I'm sorry, why do you think that might be that they grow around the equator? All those rainforests with all those green, lovely trees. That's right, because it's warmer around the equator. The sun shines more directly. So it's much, much warmer for the trees to grow. And they grow lots and lots of them. And they also have lots and lots of water. That's because, because the world is so hot around the equator, any water that's there evaporates very quickly. And then the clouds get really heavy and quickly fall as rain again. So lots of rain falls in the rainforest. So it's the perfect condition for those green trees to grow. Here's a picture of some plants quietly working hard, storing energy from the sun so that us and other animals can get food. Now, some people knock down trees so that they have space for farming and building. So lots of places, especially in South America, where the Amazon rainforest is, they knock down trees to make space because it's a big lot of land that can't be used with trees in it. And they flatten the land, they use the wood from the trees to build things, and they use it to start farms so they can have cows and sheep and pigs and animals, or they use it to build houses on. And that's a good thing, isn't it, surely? All that extra space? Well, not always. This can cause problems. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. This is called deforestation, when they remove forests. Deforestation. So do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Tell someone at home why you think this is a good thing or a bad thing. There's no right or wrong answer to your opinion. And if you need another second to discuss that, you can pause the video. So why do we need trees? Well, there's lots of reasons. First of all, trees are part of the water cycle. So the water we get that's nice and clean that falls as, as rain needs trees to be involved in that. Without trees, the water cycle couldn't continue and we wouldn't have fresh, clean water to drink. Trees are habitats. The rainforest is home to many, many, many different types of plants and animals. So the trees give these animals homes, animals like birds, um, geckos, frogs, insects, even things as big as jaguars can live in trees. So that's really important, isn't it? And if we knock down those trees, where are those animals going to live? They're not going to have a home, are they? Trees are used for fuel. So anyone who has a, a wood burning fire or a chimney in their garden, or people in the world who don't have central heating like we do, they burn the wood to make fuel to, to power things or to, give that, to keep their houses warm. Trees produce oxygen because what happens is we 
breathe in oxygen. That keeps us alive, doesn't it? We know that. But we breathe out carbon dioxide, which if the level of carbon dioxide gets too high, we can get poorly. But trees love carbon dioxide. So they take in our carbon dioxide and they turn it into oxygen for us. So without trees, even the air we breathe wouldn't be very healthy for us and we could get really poorly and possibly even die. So trees are very important for that. Trees produce food. Lots of trees produce nuts and seeds and fruits. And they get, obviously those homes are habitats, allow for hunting to get those foods from those animals. So food is a very important thing that trees produce. Remember, without plants and trees, we have no way of getting energy from the sun. We need to eat those, don't we? Trees produce shelter for people who live in the rainforest. Uh, people build houses out of the wood from trees. So very important for that. Trees keep the soil healthy. Without tree roots breaking up the soil and keeping it fresh, things wouldn't grow as easily. Trees make timber, which can be used to make lots of houses and ornaments and um, tables and things like that. Trees grow and are used for medicine. So people take parts of the trees for medicine. And as we've said, they absorb carbon dioxide so that we have fresh air to breathe. So that's some of the reasons we need trees. Can you think of any more? One thing I would say is they're lovely to look at, aren't they? I like going into forests and woods and looking at trees and taking in nature. So now we're going to look at what happens if we have fewer trees. Well, it won't rain as much. And if it doesn't rain as much, the plants won't get watered and fruit and foods won't grow. Also, we won't have as much fresh water. There's fewer habitats, so there's less places for animals to live. The earth has less oxygen, which means that we won't have the oxygen we need to keep our brains powered properly. There's not as much food. There's not as much fuel for people to burn. The soil is less, less healthy, so things can't grow as easily. There's not as much shelter for people and animals. We won't be able to discover or use new medicines. We know how important medicines are. And there's more carbon dioxide in the air, which is not a good thing. We don't want that. We want trees to get rid of that, don't we? So I'm going to set your task for you today now. Now we've learned all about trees in the rainforest. You're going to design a poster all about trees. Now it might be about trees in general to tell people about them and why they're useful. It might be about a rainforest. You need to make it colorful and eye-catching. That means it needs to have lots of color on it if you can manage it, and it needs to draw people's attention to it. So people want to see it and then want to read it because that's what a poster's for, isn't it? It needs to explain some of the places we find forests and why we find them in these places. Why they grow in places where it's hot and wet. It needs to explain why trees are so important. So you can tell me some of the reasons why trees are so important. So you could draw some pictures and then write some sentences to explain what you've drawn. So you, could, you might say, for example, trees are important because they give us fresh air to breathe. Trees are important because they provide habitats for animals. And finally, it needs to explain what might happen if we don't have enough trees left. We're trying to persuade people to look after the trees. OK, we want them to look after them and keep them safe. So we need to tell them what bad things could happen if they don't look after the trees. So have a go, get a piece of paper, um, use a book, which, uh, whatever you've got access to. And you can draw me a poster all about trees and why it's so important to look after them. Looking forward to seeing them here too. I hope you enjoyed your lesson today and I will see you soon. Bye, everyone.